It is 5.32. I'd like to call this meeting to order. We'll start off with Rocco. Alda Benavides, present. Esperalda Solis, present. Nereida Cantu, present. Roberto Zamora, present. Alex Cantu, present. I do declare a quorum. Uh, item number three, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And then we move on to public comments. Do we have any public comments? We don't. Okay, so then we move on to item number five, but, uh, budget work session number four. Good afternoon, Mr. Board President, Board of Trustees, Mr. Gonzalez, Administration, and La Jolla ISD community. During this budget work session, we will review the following. We were going to go ahead and discuss the proposed salary increases, discussion in positions identified above or below market value, also the proposed daily attendance for the 23-24 school year, property values for the 23-24 school year, revenue assumptions for the 23-24 school year, additional budget plan notes, and additional budget requests, as well as the 23-24 preliminary budget summary. Next, what you have there in your packet, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the proposed salary increases. And what you have there in this particular slide that we're looking at is uh, basically a summary of the cost estimates for a 2% increase. The first, se first section there that you see is for the teachers, librarians, and nurses. As you can see right here, with a 2% increase, we're looking at a starting salary for teachers out of 56,000, looking at a general pay increase with a 2% of $1,200. It uh, would affect close to 1,911 teachers, and we're looking at that cost being at $2,338,000. Dollars, as you can see there. We also have an adjustment to years 10 and 15, which is a total of 65 teachers that are being affected, and you see the total cost there. And what does that mean? It looks at, we're looking at teachers that are at nine years going to 10 years of experience, four uh, teachers that are at 14 going into 15 years of experience, that we need to make an adjustment. That way we can make sure that that gap is cleared and they could get closer to the median, okay? And as you can see right there, there's different categories, and you have the number of staff that it's being affected, and the cost, and it's outlined right there. Are you, do you have any questions? So if you don't, you could go all the way down, and you're able to see the total cost estimate, as you can see right there. It's a total of four million, $73,272 for a 2% increase. Okay. If we go to the next slide, right here is basically just a summary of what we just discussed. There's a total of six pay groups, as you can see, from teachers, librarian, and nurses, all the way to auxiliary staff. And you have the general pay increase, and you have the total for that. And then you have all the adjustments that need to be made right, in order for us to be able to get those identified individuals closer and then we could close the gap based on the adjustments that need to be made. And then you have the estimated total increase for each of the categories and then giving us the total of that $4,749,542. What's the difference between administrative education, administrative management, and administrative support? So administrative education, you're basically looking at um, assistant principals, coordinators, administrative management. You're looking more of uh, chief of police, directors, executive directors, and then the rest, administrative support. You're looking at your clerical, instructional support. You're looking at your instructional assistants and auxiliary, as you know. You're looking at your custodians, um, more of the operation 
departments right there. And this is a 2% all across? Across. Okay. So the next slide that we have is a discussion of positions identified above or below market value. And um, back when, when I discussed the TASP report, we had an in-depth conversation about individuals that were above and below. And I want to bring this back for discussion with you all. What you all have and what you're seeing is the positions that are identified here above the 12%. As you can see, they're listed here. And there's a total of, what, seven positions, as you can see right there, starting with the Executive Director for Purchasing Warehouse and Operations, as you can see right there. And uh, that position has been identified as being 27% above the market value, right? And then as you go all the way down, you have the last one listed there that is at 12% above, right? Now, one of the things that I explained back when, when we discussed this was that it, even though anything above 12% is considered for, it's something that we need to go ahead and look at and really look at the position in itself and think about, okay, based on the position and what it entails, you know, have a conversation about, you know, one, the, what the individual that's there, is the individual new, um, how many years of, or if not, how many years of experience, Does, is this individual in that position bringing to the table, what are the jobs and roles and responsibilities, that way to see if it merits that, um, that percentage being so high, okay? So looking at this right here, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next slide, and, and we're gonna have a conversation about both of these. We have, a, now we have the opposite, right? We have positions identified below the market value, below 12%. Um, here we have one position, which is the director for special ed, as you can see right here. Now there's some recommendations that we're bringing before you, and that way we could have a conversation about this, as you can see right here. The first recommendation that we have is uh, just the pay for the director for special education to make it within the 10% range of the market value, okay? So uh, we wanna make sure that looking at the requirements of this position in, for the director for special ed, there, we wanna make sure that we bring it more comparable and that's a recommendation that we would wanna bring before you. The next bullet right there is four of the seven positions that we identified above the market value or that task we identified above the market value were, were, were placed uh, that, let me go ahead and read it again. Four out of the seven positions identified above the market value will be placed appropriately based on the approved 2324 compensation plan. Because I do want to note that four of those positions we will be hiring for. Okay, so basically those uh, position, those individuals that we hire, we're going to be using the 2324 compensation plan to place them appropriately where they should be placed. Okay, so that will take care of that situation there. Okay, and then the position for the executive director for finance and director for fine arts will remain um, as is due to the roles and responsibilities of those positions in itself. Okay. And then we have the last bullet there. We have the risk management director position. We did analyze that and to try to determine uh, why you know it was so high, 22% above the market value. And what was an, what we, the findings was that in that particular that particular position, there was two stipends that were given throughout that uh, led to this increase being so high, 22%. Okay. So our recommendation is that we will pay a stipend instead of a pay increase until the salary falls within the market value. Okay, so that's what we would do for this particular position. Okay. Questions? Yes, what, what's the rationale for going and for looking at 12% uh, above and 12% below okay, the market? So, yes, so what, when they do the study, they identify any position that's above or below, because saying that it, that is too much of a drastic compared to the market value, meaning that we really need to look at those individuals because they're being paid a lot less compared to the comparison group in the market, right? So again, 
what they what we've been told is it doesn't mean that it's right or wrong based but we really need to analyze the what the job entails uh, the in like the number of years of experience um, and really truly delve into uh, look at all those components before a decision is made and that's what we did we really delved into looking at each of these uh, individuals and not individuals but the positions in itself and really truly in some situations the individual in itself right like for example um, looking at the last bullet here trying to see how did it get at 22 percent throughout right aside from the fact that it's being compared to a group right but uh, and then we're able to see okay this is where it really got um, his salary was increased so much by the additional uh, salary adjustments that were done throughout the several years. Mm -hmm. So just to see if I understand what you're saying here, mm -hmm. the first bullet for special education that would then, that salary would be increased. Correct. Then there will be an adjustment for four of the seven positions so that are above market value to which those positions' salaries would be decreased. So four of the seven positions basically right now, they're vacant. So we are hiring for those positions. So when we bring on the individuals onto those positions, we will be using the 23-24 compensation plan that is going to be brought before you. And we, they will be placed appropriately. The director for risk management and employee benefits is vacant? Let me, uh, let me tell you which four are the ones that we're looking at. So let me go back to... That slide. I know number one, number three, and number four are, but I'm not but sure about see, number two. On. So, uh, number one and number three, uh, four, and then we're looking at. Six, well, six were actually, that one, number six, is actually closed. Mm -hmm. But number six wasn't above 12. It's, so there, there's yes, no numbers so that one's there, closed. so yes. there's no numbers there. So are you referring to library services? Yes, I'm yeah. sorry, yes. We're doing executive director for purchasing warehouse. That's number one. And That's number one. And then mm -hmm. number two, number three, number four, number five, six, yes. and seven. Yes. So, um, so director for transportation. TV yeah, but companies. number two, it's 22 risk management. Um, that one's not um, vacant. That's the one you said that you're going to wait. Yes, that one's not vacant. Yeah. That's, you're correct. Mm -hmm. That's the one that we're proposing that instead of uh, doing pay raises, what we would do is provide stipends mm -hmm. until it, it, the, it well, I, gets I would, back to falls within the market value. But I would caution against stipends only because stipend stay there mm -hmm. and then the salaries will go up and what will happen to the stipend because you're mm -hmm. saying we're going to bring, <laughs> provide them a stipend mm -hmm. well down the road what's going to happen to those stipends well it, it, the way it would work is if we do a thousand um, if it, a raise is for five hundred dollars then instead of providing the raise we would do a stipend for that year and it would not the following year that that five hundred dollars is not part of the salary right because it was a one-year stipend then the following year when we do the study we check to see where his pay is falling right if it's already within the market value then we're good right if it's not then we would go we would continue with the stipend that is the recommendation but i hear what you're saying Mr. yeah Dr. because Samora. we're saying here that we're going to place them appropriately so that stipend or whatever that amount is would be considered in that salary that you're determining to be appropriate. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. there, we don't have a group with stipends and another group without stipends. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure what, what appropriately where, sir? On the second bullet. Well, no, because he's not one of the four. Yeah, but I'm just, in general, when we're looking at stipends and talking about that you're hiring that mm -hmm. you're going to be using stipends to give them additional salaries. Okay, I, I see what you're saying. Yes, he, but for the risk management director position, what we're saying is the recommendation is, but it's noted. Okay. We'll note that. Right. A, a stipend would be more conditional than actually institutionalizing the, let's say, a raise or an increment when it's already been identified as 
already being above the market value. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a stipend can be conditioned, right? It doesn't have to be institutionalized or rolled over for the following year. Correct. Right? So right. that base still remains the base instead of it increasing and increasing. So yeah. that salary still remains the base while a, a stipend is conditional. Yeah, but we're saying two things. One is we want to place them at an appropriate level. Correct. But yet we're going to get a stipend, which means then we didn't place them appropriately. So if it's an appropriate level, what is the appropriate right. level? This is what we're saying. I'll be very yes. clear. We're going to uh, essentially establish a ceiling on that salary for now because it is above market. There will be an option to earn a stipend which is conditioned or conditional. So it doesn't become institutionalized and it doesn't raise the bar of that salary. If we apply a, if HR were to apply, let's say the 2% or raise, whatever percentage raise, mm -hmm. it increases the base salary. Right now we're capping that base salary until the market adjusts for it and it, be, it normalizes because right now it's that 22% right above its market. So we're gonna cap that base salary for now and, and provide a conditional stipend if they earn it, if they have it, otherwise they are already capped. Mm -hmm. yes. It just opens that for other employees to ask the question, why not me? Right, it, because, the, because mm -hmm. the greatest inequality is the equal treatment of unequals, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, every situation is gonna be individual, Dr. Zamora, right? Like in a disciplinary situation in a classroom, uh, it, it, it's a case-by-case -case basis which can be readily and easily, easily defended just by the administration alone, let alone our attorneys, to boot. So it, it is a conditional thing. Yeah, and, but and, and that's why we identified it, Dr. Samora, as over uh, the market value. Well, so clearly the data already speaks to that. And I, but, and, and, right, but you've, that? you've just pointed out the concern that I have. Yes. That when it comes on a on a uh, individual by individual basis, then making sure that who that individual is is not the determining factor of whether they get the additional Oh, no, sir, it's the position, not well, the individual. I just want to make that clear. Yeah, no, no. that is not always the and case. I was going to ask noted. some names that would be nice to this list, because we don't know, I don't know who half of these people are or who these positions belong to, but, I mean, I just, I, we're addressing it because they're overpaid, and we need to bring them down to uh, standard. We're addressing the positions listed yes. here that were right. the ones above market value. And that is that is correct. It, this was a report that was conducted by TASPI Has that's been. done been. Correct. Uh, yearly, and that is it's a report that we do yearly right. we bring before you all. I don't think anyone is debating all that you're saying. The whole point was that the four positions were going to be placed appropriately. So correct. that was why, because it four of the seven identified will be placed appropriately. So that was a little. Um, misleading because if they're going to get a stipend, they're going to be even a little higher. We understand the fact yes. that its stipend is not, doesn't stay. We understand right. that it's conditional. We understand all that. It's just the fact that that said that they were going to be placed appropriately. But yes. when you give an additional stipend, it increases it even more. And that was the point. And we know that it's only going to be uh, temporary or whatever, and that yes. stipends are reviewed every year, and that uh, they're not automatic, and that stipends can be removed at all. We know all that. Mm -hmm. It's just the fact that the way it was re written, it says four of the seven positions identified above the market value will be placed yes. appropriately on the approved compensation plan. Right. That well, little I phrase is misleading, mm -hmm. yes. that's why. Yes. In the very last bullet, it is clarified where it says that the, that position yes. is going to be uh, treated differently because it's 22% above. above hence, you, hence, your clar hence your clarifying question, Dr. Benavides, which I appreciated it earlier, which you asked for the four positions, which we identified them, right? And uh, which were the, uh, the very first one which was the executive director, director for operations. Right, the risk management. The risk the management. Tr right. And then um, it was the next one, which was... Director of transportation and, and then the Chief library of service media. Yes. Right, those were the four. And that's why I identified risk management director uh, differently, which we were going to do something different. Mm -hmm. Well, so, because, because those four are vacant positions. Yes, That's correct. why it was written Co this correct. way, is the way I understood yes. it. Those correct. were vacant, and right. so it's... 
That's why it says placed appropriately based on who's when, hired. Right. And, 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 plan. and we're asking for Apple um, ability for the administration, Dr. Benavides, to actually interpret what appropriate means, right? Because we could stay up all night defining what appropriate means. And I think it, it, give, gi given, right, given the fact that of the professional quality of cabinet you know we have, when we're reporting or presenting to the board that we're going to make appropriate adjustments, they will be appropriate based on not only practices, but policy and also legal advice. So that, that's for sure. Again, the greatest inequality is the equal treatment of unequals, and the word appropriate is appropriate. And um, what we're saying is we're not going to, uh, let's say, recommend, oh, no, let's, according to the market study, reduce that. Well, it depends on the experience. That's, we use the word commensurate is what we normally use, and, and we will be very careful how we move forward according to that individual case, right? Uh, but with regard to policy, with regard to recommendation, this has been vetted by our attorneys and administratively professionally delivered to this board. Um, it, it, it's a difficult situation. I think of all of the 4,200 positions that this district has, it's really a wonderment that we're just down to four positions that are a, a bit over, overly marketed and we're making those adjustments in the most humane way, considering the individual's qualifications. I thought there was more. Pardon me? I thought there was more positions that were above. There, there's a lot more above the 0%, but above 12%, you know, at 12% or above, it, okay. these were the ones. Yes. Because I remember, I mean, this, yes. is, this is an old problem. Yes. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, in the next few slides, I'm just going to go over some of the, the pieces of information that helped us create our budget plan for 23-24. And first off, we start off with ADA, or average daily attendance. So back in um, December 2022, we had a requirement to TEA to submit a forecast of ADA for fiscal year 23-24 and 24-25. So at that point in time, uh, finance met with student services and some program directors to come up with that submission. And that submission is now part of the uh, La Jolla ISD's first rating. And at that point in time, uh, we came up with a, a ADA of 21,250 for uh, fiscal year 23-24. Okay, the next slide, uh, we see a trend of ADA over the last years. Um, some key things to point out would be that in uh, 2020, 2020, we had um, COVID and uh, we had an ESSER adjustment for the 24,663. In the following year, in 2021, we had virtual attendance, which kept us at 24,768. In 2022, uh, we see the dip to 21,417, and that had a ADA adjustment for the first semester of the school year. And currently for 2023, uh, we are looking at 21,354 from preliminary reports that we've seen uh, from uh, student services. Um, and that is, uh, c consists of both traditional ADA and the optional flexible school day program. Um, so then you see plotted there at the end, the 21,250, which is what we are forecasting for the following year. So the budget is based on the 21,250? Yes, ma'am. Any questions on that? On the enrollment, the last enrollment report that we viewed, that you shared with us, I think that there was a little bit over 400 students under from what we had projected last year. And last year our budget was also based on 21,250 projected no, last year, enrollment. Last year our ADA was at 21,500. That's the ADA. Our last budget. year being? 2023. Uh, the number that you have here, the 21,354 is compared okay. against 21,500, okay. the, the budget. We budgeted so at 21,500. That was our ADA? Yes, we budgeted 21,500. Okay. You said you budgeted. What did we actually achieve? We, right now, um, like the uh, uh, data point says, we are at 21,354. At, through the end of the six six weeks, that's what the preliminary numbers that we, we are we're seeing. Okay. Okay. Sixty-three students less. Pardon? For sixty-three less 
well, it, I know it's ADA, but. So on the next um, slide. The question for every district is, where did the kids go? Nobody seems to know. Because we can't <laughs> find them anywhere. Right. Anywhere. <laughs> and everybody's having the same issue. Yeah, the, the, I mean, they're, I don't know where they are. Mm. But anyway, I get it. Thank okay. you. <laughs> uh, so on the next slide, uh, we go over property values. This is a first report requirement to discuss property values with the Board of Trustees. And as you guys can see, uh, for the past five years, we see property values increasing. And um, a, key, a key takeaway from this is that as property values go up, uh, we get more local tax compression, uh, which drives our MCR to go down. Um, and also as property values go up, our T2 values go, go up as well, which drives less state aid from a, from a tier one revenue perspective. Um, again, the 2023 data is not is, is still preliminary data. We do not have our certified values until late July, and once we have those those with that data, we go ahead and, and give that to TEA, and they assign us our MCR. When the, are the appeals over? Pardon? The appeals for their appraisal. When is that over? I. It's, it's like over? May 15th. July, I, or no, I know it was May 15th. Was to just. For the appeal, appeal, right? To but, appeal. but they haven't acted on them yet. They still have to act on them. The people that filed an yeah. appeal. So, because that will have a, also have an impact. Okay. Um. So you set the MCR, hmm? Next, the compressed X ray. Yes. Is that what you're referring to? Mm -hmm. So, what uh, based on what you're hearing from the agency now, what? Are the possible implications of that compressed tax rate on our revenues? The, from a tier one perspective, Dr. Samora, that the bottom line doesn't change, right? Tier one is, is basically the bucket of, of all the students that we have, the ADA, the, the state comp kids, the, um, uh, the uh, dyslexia kids, all the, that bucket, right? That we have a bucket. The tier one is what ba basically draws a line in the sand where it says, oh, you know what? This is the state portion and this is the local portion. So bottom line, it doesn't affect us. It just means that we would get, we would need more if that compression keeps on going down, the, the taxpayer pays less, but the values are going up. And that means that we get less, less state aid, but the bottom line still stays the same from okay. a tier one revenue perspective. So that means we're gonna have, uh our, our share will be higher at the local level. Yes, if it, than the state level. Yes, because the, but the revenues that we'll be getting will probably not be any higher than what we were getting last year. Well, we'll see a slide in a little bit. Uh, but yes, in, th in theory, unless a change occurs, which I mean, I haven't seen anything that has changed. Yeah, so far there has been no legislation to, to increase the basic allotment. So just to remind us that we are remaining flat on revenues, or maybe even lower. We'll but see. we are looking at increasing expenditures. Yeah, we'll, we'll see okay. in, the, in, the, in right. the next slide. Okay, so then um, to the next slide. Um, so again, we are assuming the 6160 in ADA. There is, again, no legislation to actually increase that number yet. Um, there, there is a special session going on right now, but we have not heard anything about that going up. Um, what did happen is, is that the golden penny yield did increase from 126 to, from 98 to 126. Um, so that did help us. Um, and uh, currently, uh, like I said before, we are uh, assuming that 21,250 ADA, the increase of 6.95% in the property values, and a total tax rate of 1.451. And that is the actual MCR plus the tier two pennies plus the INS rate. Um, and again, full disclosure, we are still working with preliminary, preliminary numbers. Uh, July 25th is a date when we actually get the certified values and we take the TEA, TEA gives us the MCR. And by saying that the golden penny yield is now 126.21, that's for this current year? That's for next fiscal year. So there's a change then from this current year to next year? Yes. From 98 to 126? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's still a big help. Right. We don't have a projection of what that will turn out to be, just based on. Yes, the, the, this slide next. This next slide, 
it shows the 2022-23 versus 23-24 as, as we're uh, currently proposing. Um, so then you see how, although the ADA is going down, the total revenue is actually going up, and the biggest driver of that change is the, the actual increase in the yield for the golden penny. So what's driving the, the yield of the golden penny? Pardon? What, is, what changes have occurred that is driving the yield of the golden pennies? The, the, just the current, current law moved it from 98 to 126. And as soon as when you plug it in, it the current law just changed it from one year to the next. Yes, not necessarily because of current legislation. No, no, this is current law. Okay, current law produced that change. Okay. And uh, just some additional budget plan notes. Um, we um, again, we were required to submit a notice. Okay. A public meeting to discuss budget and proposed tax rate, and we did that in the monitor on June 8th and June 9th. Again, that showed an MCR that's still not finalized. Uh, we, we need to adopt our budget by June 30th, uh, and we won't receive the actual certified values until late July. And once again, once we get that information, we'll submit that to TEA to get our MCR, which is the tier one component of our tax rate, and we'll go ahead and build the total tax rate, which will include the, the MCR plus the tier two pennies plus the INS rate. Um, and then we'll come back in September and republish the, the, the official numbers and we'll come back in, in September to actually adopt the tax rate in September 2023. And finally, we're also working with our, with our financial advisor to possibly look at the opportunity of retiring our bonds earlier. Say, that, say more about that. Uh, we're looking at uh, uh, working with uh, Stein Hosa on def defeasance of bonds. So we would, uh, if whatever gap that we have in the, the tax rate, we might be able to sprinkle some of those pennies to the INS side to go ahead and, and, and pay off our debt faster. So the INS rate would go up? Yes. <clears throat> but the total, tax, the, the total tax rate for the taxpayer- Would there be a, a requirement for any kind of an election? No. Or public? As, as, far as, we're cons as, as far as we, we've been told, there is no requirement for an election. Uh, there, there has to be a resolution to the board. And that will depend on the amount, right? Uh, I think we can't go over 50 cents for the INS rate. That's as far as, as we, we understand. Will that, in, will that enter the overall tax, tax rates where we may be required to go to the public? The, we have to re, we would the re, tax rate. We would republish again with the actual rates, so everything's there. But um, we would have to get a resolution to the board to say that you guys obviously are okay with it. Um, but we're, all, we're working with Tain Hosa on that, on that. So we're moving then maintenance and operation pennies to mm. INS pennies or No, not? no, it's just, it just the gap because remember, the MCR is gonna get compressed. We'll add the tier two pennies. We have, we have 127 right now and we'll drop it to 114. That's the difference, about 13 pennies that we could take from uh, the overall tax rate and move it to INS to, pr to pay off debt faster. That, that should also have a positive impact in our first rating, but also with, re with regard to the fiduciary responsibility of this board, you're defeating debt uh, further and just better positioning the district for future look at bonds for our dating um, facilities across the district. You know, this, this district has not benefited from a bond in over 20 years, and uh, we're, we're well overdue for things of that nature, but this is just logical steps to take forward with defeating debt that is really no longer benefiting our students. Thank you. Thank you, Jaime. Good afternoon, board president, members of the board, superintendent, Mr. Gonzalez. I'm gonna continue on with the, uh, the expenditure side of, of, the, uh, of our budget that we have on the screen. I'm gonna to go to the next slide. And additional budget requests outside of the uh, division's um, allocation were dwindled down to these uh, six or seven items that you can see listed there. And one of the main items that we kept on there um, was the, uh, the, uh, the, for operations, they had requested 10 buses, but we had to reduce that down to, or we can afford three more. And we wanna try to get into the uh, situation of trying to buy three buses uh, every year, so we wanted to start this year. 
and continue moving forward because our buses are, um, you know, getting older. They're, they're aging and we got to get back into the routine of replacing our buses. So in this current budget, I'm going to present to you in a little bit, it's going to include that additional uh, uh, allocation that you see there of $594,900. So uh, what we've been waiting for here, and I'm sorry for it being too small, but that's the best it can fit onto this screen, is the actual uh, uh, budget itself on presenting our revenues and our uh, expenditures in two different columns. And um, um, this is the pr preliminary budget summary using current law, as presented by Mr. Lopez, applying uh, uh, with no raise. I got these mixed up, I'm sorry. Without applying a raise, we applied the salary amounts that were from ESSER 2, we moved them to ESSER 3. Um, so therefore, you'll see ESSER 3 with a $26 million um, budget there just for salaries alone. Um, by doing so, the general fund now would have a surplus in the amount of $5,011,762. As you can see in the middle of the screen where it says subtotal general fund, you can see a surplus of $5,011,762. Uh, $5, um, I just want to uh, point out that in the general fund, it would have to again assist the health insurance fund as the health insurance fund is located near the bottom of the screen. Uh, you'll see health insurance fund with revenues and in the middle you have a transfers in of $2.5 million. That is coming from the general fund. So if the health insurance was uh, a little bit more um, healthier, uh, that $2.5 million would have remained in the general fund. So um, we also have a deficit though in Fund 224 Special Ed. Uh, we're still uh, reviewing that at the time of production. I uh, was still unable to clarify that uh, negative amount if, uh, if they're gonna have a, uh, a carry forward to cover that amount. If not, we'd have to move that amount towards the general fund itself. For the ESSER funds, sir, 282 ESSER 3? Yes, sir. We're going to, the, the same salaries we paid that in ESSER right. 2, we want this to move them to ESSER 3. This is the same. We've gone through extensive staffing adjustment plan yes. from January through now because of the $27 million that we had identified as a deficit. We're back to where we started. Uh, just and we've gone through that, and now we're going back to another $26, 27000000 million worth of ESSER funds. When we had been told that although the ESSER funds had been already committed, and that we did not have any more ESSER funds available. Right. At that time period, they were committed, but over the, as the time went on, um, a lot of the initiatives that had began were either complete and weren't utilized all the fundings in that area, and or the initiative, I'm not too sure if I, we have Mr. Jeff Otis here to sure. answer those questions on the yeah, rest of that difference. Yeah, because I know that you've gone through extensive, we've gone through extensive staffing adjustment uh, discussions. Correct. And we also, I know to get the plans out, we were told, I mean, yeah. all of those monies are committed and we went through all that we've gone through. And this just brings everything now to where we're just moving it another year down, and we're gonna come back again to do similar things. We're gonna be facing the same situation that we faced this year. Yes, and so that's the purpose of, well, that's the reasoning behind the, actually it's about seven and a half million dollar surplus, or eight million dollar surplus, was so that the staff adjustment plan had saved us about eight million dollars. It's but in this good, case, in this budget here, about well, we're still at the 27 million. We were so supposed to. Yeah, that's still, it's still, well, it's still a big The plus. repurposing has to have an answer from Mr. Flores because he was overseeing the development of all that plan. Right. That was, that had stakeholder input. That perhaps now uh, we're, we're, we're uh, affecting the equity in terms of projects that may have been approved across campuses that may now be placed on hold. Is that correct? Or I mean, just tell us, give us an update. Yes, uh, good afternoon, uh, board president and, and members and, and Mr. Gonzalez and members of the committee. 
Uh, the ESSER fund, as you were right, uh, there was input from the, from the, the community, and that was uh, taken into the mitigation strategies, which included the loss learning, uh, the mental health, and HVAC projects, and, and its majority uh, of those, those uh, items. So uh, when we received the $147 million uh, in year one, uh, we uh, started distributing the monies, right? So we end up uh, at the end of year one, which is the 21-22 the school year, we expanded uh, $41.4 million, including indirect costs. So the, the, uh, basics, the basic was uh, cover, which is the last learning. Uh, as I mentioned, we mentioned the mental health and the HVAC projects, the play sets, and some other initiatives. Uh, so we, we got those funds a little bit late in, in November, October, somewhere around that, there, and then we started dealing with that uh, procurement. Uh, our process at that time for procurement was a little bit hard, and there was some adjustments done by the purchasing department uh, due to the um, procurement process. So uh, during this current year, 22-23, uh, uh, we have encumbered $18.9 million and expanded 43.9. So that brings us to a, a total of $62.8 million. And we're still pending some stipends that are still processing in, uh, with payroll. And that would put us uh, around $63.2 million or so until that's, those are clear. So that leaves us with around $37 million for, for year three that was still are able to do the loss learning to address those. Uh, the requests already come through our office already uh, for the loss learning, some mental health, and the HVAC projects that are still working on it. And, and that also includes- And so uh, what projects are not going to be completed or continued with? The places are- Because are you had already be, committed some money, so right. you've said, okay, and we're gonna stop right. those And those money projects. has- Just so that everybody will know what projects right. are on hold. Right. The, or will not be completed, period. All the, the places are in process. I know Mr. Garcia is here. The places are in process, the canopies, the, the, the benchmark, the, the benches, excuse me, HVAC, HVAC projects, and the NOC, which is the Network Operating Center. So those are already established. The money has been distributed to them already. So those are, will continue. Uh, part of the ESSER 2, we have some HVAC projects uh, that are being part of that uh, ESSER 2. And those are, are, are still in, in, in process. We, st we still have until uh, September uh, 30 of, of this year to complete those. And then they'll give us an additional 90 days, but not to procure, but to make sure we have this, the goods in. So uh, that, that's what we have so far. So uh, as I just wanna just assure the, the board that the last learning will be covered uh, based on what we had done. Uh, just keep in mind that to be competitive uh, throughout the, our, our region, we went from $35 to $50. So that picked it up. So I understand that we're gonna go back to $35 an hour. So that's gonna help us out in that sense. Uh, the projects have been committed. They're, they're in progress. I know that uh, places have, have arrived. Are arriving. Uh, the canopies have been already part of it, right, and the HVAC projects. So all of the canopies that are to be constructed will be constructed, yes, you're sir. saying that? Right. All of the projects. If I, if I may, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Gonzalez, and members of the board, I do have proposed as to what Mr. Villarreal had already, had already listed, but had not procured. So it was only conversation with the engineers that were contracted, they were able to do plans, and as, as we speak, that's where there are on pause just because it had never gotten procured. So, for example, the natatorium, if you all remember that HVAC project, was about 2.7 million uh, estimated cost. Um, Zapata Elementary with new chillers redesigned system at 3.9 million. And uh, Juarez Lincoln High School, two cooling towers for 846. So these projects, they never move forward with them. And, and I know you all had conversations before I came into the position. So that's where we're at right now. So, so I know when we had our, our workshop with the committee, that was kind of the concern was, well, if we haven't used it yet, what else can we use the ESSER monies for? So are these gonna be done or not? That's, that's, that's where we're at right now. 
See, that's the thing. That, so you see, said, the problem wasn't the board. The problem was getting the work done from our staff at that exactly. point. Well, the they problem were never, were was not with the board. You're right. It was not with the, the board, board, but we were informed. Exactly. We were informed that those projects, that those monies were already committed. We asked it point blank with the whole cabinet. Yeah. And you told us that those monies were already committed, that we would not have those dollars available for going forward with funding salaries. And now here we have again $27 million worth of salaries going into next year that again we're going to be faced with a similar situation that we're faced now. Well, this is, actually, this is actually very good news, Dr. Samora, for us, to tell you the truth. Um, if some of these funds can uh, reasonably and administratively be and responsibly and legally be repurposed to better benefit this district, we're definitely going to recommend that to this board. Now, just because you were told something a year ago that was maybe appropriate or, 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 or logical doesn't mean that it is now. Um, well, I'm not going to be – one moment, please. I'm not going to recommend something to this board, if we have monies on the table that have not, they may have been committed last year, but if they can legally and responsibly be repurposed, I'm gonna recommend accordingly. And so if we have millions and millions of dollars that are gonna go to canopies that may or may not be needed, just because they were recommended two years ago when I was not here, a year ago when I was not here, if I don't deem it appropriate as the superintendent, I'm not gonna recommend it. I'm gonna seek legal counsel, I'm going to seek professional advice and consulting and come back to this board so that you can make a better educated decision as to what we will do with these millions of dollars that, that are ESSER funds that can still be purposed for the benefit of our children, okay. right? which were the intent of the ESSER funds to begin with. So to say that, well, they were committed, yes, they were recommended and committed, but since, and it wasn't this board that held anything back, but circumstances right, have those funds unexpended. They're not expended yet. And so we're going to recalibrate, repurpose, and come back to this board for approval. Okay. But to go back and say, I think it would be very irresponsible if we were to say, well, two years ago they were committed for this purpose. I want all these canopies done. I, I may not recommend these canopies to be done. We may not need them. They may not be conducive to student learning and student development, which is our number one uh, area, you know, at La Jolla ISD. We're going to be student-focused, data-driven, and results-oriented. And if our data indicates that we should not do that, I will not be recommending accordingly. We're going to repurpose, come back very responsibly to this board, and, and leave it for a vote. And one, all, 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 that you've said, all that you've said does not change that the stakeholders had already given us that information. And it does not change the fact that then we will have some schools that were expecting it. And we talked about equity before. So is it equitable that some do and some don't? I mean, we have that, and it does not remove from us the obligation that we have as a board moving forward of looking for another $27 million next year. But at this point, I think the three projects that you said haven't been out for bid are HVACs. Other than that, canopies and playgrounds are All in place. Are. Well, the and, three and, and I feel that every time that we're coming here, we're changing in. HVACs, yet we don't get a single complaint that our HVACs aren't working. So maybe if the HVACs, uh, according to the a study that they had done previously, if they're okay, why fix something that isn't broken? So at this point, I don't understand why it hasn't been out for procurement if we actually, well, I, and I know why, because we, we approved these playgrounds almost two years ago, and we have still to see them. We, have, we approved these canopies two years ago, and we have still to see them. What's the, gonna be the difference now uh, from then? So if we can use them to better, those, these funds to better serve our students and our staff, well, why not? At the end of the day, that's what they're for. I mean, at, at, that's, that's the way I think, because uh, my son is it already gonna be in fourth, fifth grade, and I don't need, he hasn't enjoyed playgrounds, and I'm sure kids were in fourth and fifth grade, they're going to sixth grade, and they never saw these playgrounds. So it, I just feel, that, and it's upsetting on my end, and I think in everybody's end, that we're pay, we were painted an illusion and we still have yet to see that illusion. And that's very disappointing uh, on, 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 on this end. So. Well, and one of the things, and uh, one of the things that I know that I recommended at that time was that we needed to be visionary and that not all the schools needed those canopies. Right. Because in the future, whether we like it or not, some schools may have to be closed. That's reality. You can't have 500 less kids and continue 
to operate buildings the way you did. That's point number one. However, uh, the, whatever the needs are at Zapata, because I didn't get, but you said it was 3.9, I would like for, or to recommend that that, that be evaluated very mm -hmm. carefully because that's one of our schools way out there. Yes. I mean, it's never going to close yeah. because the, the population, the population is moving that way. Yeah. And so it is important that we, if it is the a direct, I don't know what the 3.9 encompass, but whatever it was, it is important that we, that we take care of that because of the fact that we won't be able to afford it on our own. And this was already right. there. And then the situation with what is Lincoln, we keep... Uh, getting that about the equity and making sure that Juarez Lincoln is equipped the way it needs to be equipped. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get their number, and I don't know what the project was. What, you they, what they had was replace cooling towers. Cooling towers, yes. and how much was that amount? Eight hundred and forty, approximately eight hundred and forty-six thousand. So that would be my only recommendation to administration is that you keep these two campuses Absolutely. in mind only because they're way yep. out there. Yes. They're not going to close. And going back to, to the comment uh, Mr. President made was in reference to, because that's the same question I had. We, we did that study where we have all the chillers around, uh, all the buildings, and, and Zapata was not at that age in, in time where they were just really going to go obsolete. It was just a matter of saying, well, we have $4 million, why don't we just redo? And, and I, again, I, I wasn't there, I couldn't tell you that it was a recommendation from administration or it was a recommendation from an art engineer, you know, because that's, that's what I'm getting to and that's my, part of my due diligence is finding out what is really needed at that particular campus. It might be that maybe just one of the pipes doesn't connect right or, or that's what the problem may be. So we just fix that. That doesn't need to be a whole redesign. That would, that would be my recommendation, Absolutely. just to look carefully at those two campuses I think that's and what is needed, should. and that we do and use. I, I would add to that recommendation that it's much. Not, maybe I'm not sorry. that amount, but something. Right, yeah, but you're right. You're right. Those, well those schools aren't closing. So. Yeah. I, I would add to the rec that recommendation that as much as we can use ESSER three funds for non-recurring expenditures, that we would not be using them again next year that we do that. Because right now we're putting them into personnel. Personnel is a recurring expenditure and we're going to need to find money next year. So that if we can find money to use instead of extra funds to pay for personnel, that's a strong recommendation on my part. Because I don't want to obligate ourselves to coming back next year again and going through what we've done this spring. I don't think it's fair to our district, it's not fair to our community, it's not fair to our employees. But We're going to hear, and everything that I'm saying here is in the best interest of students and in the best interest of our teachers, of our employees, and our community. I just uh, want to just to uh, add the fact that uh, when departments ask for the for the funds, we require two funds, which is the allowable use of, of TA uh, funds, and also our local additional funds. Right, so those are. Those are coming in from those departments. So my, my job is to make sure that we do have the money and we create the accounts, we give, it, we give them that, those funds allowable to those individuals once I get those two forms. And then it's up to them whether it's engineering involved or it's uh, whatever the materials that might be uh, not in, available because of uh, the, uh, we're still suffering the uh, pandemic that even with the HVAC, uh, they're so backlog that the demand is so high. So that's why the state moved it uh, for us to have 90 days after the fact of the maturity day of the grant. So then TA will have an additional 30, 30 days so they can report to uh, the, the uh, USD. So that's what I just wanted just to inform that, that you know, it goes for all, this, all the mitigation strategies that were approved. As a matter of fact, uh, a, a week ago we revisited the RIPRIX, you know, where as you are aware, um, it was uh, there was a letter that was sent uh, from uh, the government this is, uh, telling us that the pandemic was over May 11. So we had to make adjustments to that, and we we met and we we updated our our plan. And if it's necessary to re, uh, meet uh, with the community again, uh, we'll do so uh, based on the your directive. So that's my mine was a strong recommendation. If you look at 
non-recurring expenditures that we have that can be funded through ESSER, that those will be where the ESSER funds go. Because that reduces the number of staff then that we will be having to re uh, find monies for next year again. When was COVID over again, Mr. Flores? I'm sorry? When was the COVID officially over? What day? Uh, May 11, okay. 2023. We, the canopies were for COVID purposes and we still- yeah, have part, part of that was uh, linked to the social, emotional, That's... mental health. So that well, you've got a long to... list now of items that you can use ESSER funds for. I know this has been going on for a long time, but um, as far as the playgrounds and stuff, have we not gotten anything in yet? Mr. Garcia, do we know? Has that come in from the companies, like the playgrounds and all that, the canopies? Playgrounds are arriving. Um, so as a matter of fact, on Thursday, I do have a meeting with uh, a gentleman, I believe, out of, out of Elsa, and he's part of that, that company that's going to come and help install. Install. Okay. Yeah. He was I, looking for the contact person, so I gave him your thank number. Thank you so much, Dr. Benavides. <laughs> he did tell me I am the mayor of, of Elsa. He's but. the mayor of Elsa, so. <laughs> wow. So, so but he does, he does install those. Yes. And so I gave him your number. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, we are having a meeting on Thursday. Right. Uh, I, I want to thank this board for your patience. Uh, if you remember what we've all gone through, and especially school districts, with regard to materials, right? Not only did uh, wood and metal skyrocket 300, 400%, 1,000% in cost, um, and it took them another six months for prices to come back down to normalcy. Um, and, and here we are, and not, it wasn't so long ago that all this was approved, you know, actually funded, and, and, but, but changes, the needs do change, and we will be, the stakeholders have not changed, Dr. Samara, they are our community, they are our children, uh, they are our parents, um, and, but as Dr. Benavides just mentioned, the specific needs will be greater or more accentuated, you know, or more pronounced than certain campuses than others. While some campuses may be looked at, you know, we look at closing, that does change. And so how we expend it, we will come back very responsibly to this, to this board, um, but we're, we're being responsible in looking at what we have, and yes, the list that you mentioned of what we can spend it on, we're gonna take a very close look at what our current needs are. I, I have a list, sir. Yes. Of the number of people yep. that, were affect, that were being funded by ESSER last year. Yep. And I've shared it with you before. There's, there were over 600 people. Right. Right? Right. So are we going to be facing the same situation? No, we, going we have the next? same list. We have the same list. Like I said, we have a very competent administration, Dr. Samora. You know that. Yeah, but we're just pushing, that, pushing no. it down. Right. So I'm asking for your patience because thing. that's a very irresponsible statement that does not need to be made because it's not true. And so we're being, every year, we're being very responsible. And, and for us to say, well, we're still at the same place last year, this year as we were last year, not true. We're going to be very responsible with every dollar, and every dollar will follow the student needs, which is what you just asked for us to do, which we yeah. will do. So what lessons did we learn from our experience with ESSER funds being used for funding that's not personnel? A, that's not a and then reasonable now. question. No, no, no. It no. is a good question because right. we well, should learn have, from well, what I we've done. I can done. answer it because you just, uh, you just answered it for us. No recurring funds, so no recurring needs. In other words, we're going to spend it in where it needs to be spent where it doesn't get to so be you're recurred. Gonna take a we're not going to carry it. needless FTEs. I'm the first person that's come back to tell you we're not, I'm not going to do that. Okay. We're not going to carry the needless amount of FTEs that were created, right? And I don't want to go back and point fingers as to who created them and so forth. What we do know is we're going to be re responsible with our recommendations so that this board could truly say you were, you know, your fiduciary responsibility has been met. So are you, in a, are you agreeing that you're going to go back and look at and see uh, uh, what can be funded from ESSER that are not recurring funds. That's exactly what I just said. Okay. We, we're going to make sure that we, we spend these dollars responsibly ac according to the current student needs, campus needs of this district and according to the law. This $26 million, um, how much of this, maybe I missed it, how much of this $26 million is staffing? That right there is all salaries. All salaries? All yes. salaries, yes. But uh, our, that's, um, ESSER 2 had 25 million, ESSER 3 already had a million in there. So we, uh, since there was some funding available, we had made a decision to move that to ESSER, so that way then we can still build on our general fund. 
So last year we uh, used those $27 million plus $5 million for stipend in December. That is alarming. It is very alarming because 26 million, that's a lot of people. Well, that's, that's, that's why the, the district took, took the, well, you, the thing is we started two years ago on the staffing adjustment plan. If yep. we stick to the plan, we should be, and this isn't gonna change overnight because this, right. this has been occurring for years. That's why we didn't get here last year. We right. got here in, because of a couple of decades of, of, of this conditioning. conditioning. So at the end of the day, we're not gonna fix it overnight, but we need to stick to the plan and make sure that we execute it and make sure that we put everything aside, but we need to make sure that we, once we start executing this plan, we stick to it and don't deviate because at the end of the day we say one thing but we don't we don't stick to what we say right so well, exactly well, we sir we but that's exactly why i'm saying i mean here we are the same place we went through staffing allocations and what you said we didn't do so what happened between january and now we've been moving people for the last four months mm -hmm. that's right for the and betterment so we're still and so at the same i, I place. shared with you last month let's be clear and for the record dr samora i and in fact it was in, in corresponding to your questions I said that in 36 months, we will be solvent. Might even be 24 months, because we're doing this very aggressively. But you just don't do it overnight because this problem was created you know, a, a while back, right? I can go back 60 or months or more. And, and we, the way we got here, no fue de un golpe, right? And so it was, it was not done instantly. But we will, we're being very responsible and taking a look at this, and we will be making the adjustments so that we're completely solvent in the black, right? Um, no more than 36 months from now. So the, the plan is rather aggressive. We actually, we actually took great gains, you know, this, this last, you know, two months to establish a budget that we're presenting this month that will save us the six to eight million dollars, maybe more, maybe up to 10, right, that will get us there. But certainly three years from now, 36 months from now, we will not have a deficit because every year we will but we will actually deficit budget as we move forward. So we will not be there, believe me, we will not be, you will not be able to say, next year at this month, you will not be able to say, we're in the same place we were you know, this year as we are last year, because we're being very aggressive the way we're coming back without hurting students, um, taking a very mindful look at, at academic and student needs first, right? But we will correct this, the, the over allocation of, of, of um, you know, FTEs uh, that were ESSER funded, um, you know, we're, we're making that mediation very responsibly. In the essence of time... I was dividing that by three and it doesn't show. In the essence of time, let's, let's just no. move forward, please. Okay. The next slide, thank you, Mr. Flores, would be uh, on a two... Per, this preliminary budget summary using current law applying a raise sir. of 2%. Yes, sir. Time, because you, you move to the next slide. But yes. we, I wanted just to touch upon health insurance. Yes, sir. And that one, we're moving up. We're increasing. We're increasing. I'm sorry? We're, we're taking 2.5 million from rates. the general fund. That's what he said. Yes. We're, we're going to be increasing. Uh, we're going we're gonna to be increasing our copay and our deductible. That was uh, approved on the first budget work session that we had. Therefore, it should, since it starts January 1st of 2023, in the middle of our fiscal year, we should recoup about two and a half to three million, three million dollars of savings for that year. So that's that, the item that needs to be brought back to the board because we voted on it in a work session and that wasn't, uh, we need to work, we need to vote on it at a board meeting. But that's a recommendation you all are doing for both. Yes. I, under, I understood by our attorneys that it was approved that night. It wasn't well, written. Let's just as revisit a, that and make sure. It wasn't written well, as an action it's, item. It's, it's, it doesn't do us any harm to bring it back and make sure that everything yes, is okay. We well, can we'll, do that. I'll double check. Just to revisit that, yes. Okay. okay. So that, that, would, uh, you, that would help uh, uh, our health insurance fund uh, in a matter of only the people that are uh, using our health insurance. On the next slide. We have um, the preliminary budget again, the summary using current law, applying a raise of 2% uh, from midpoint. Again, using the assistance of ESSER 3, the general fund still had a surplus in the amount of $527,095. Uh, 
Uh, this is with the general fund again, assisting the health insurance with the $2.5 million, as you can see right there. Nothing else has changed except that if we gave a 2% increase in, in pay from midpoint, that would, we would still be in a surplus of half a million dollars for the general fund. And that concludes my area. Just a mindful note, and then can you just make a special note on that, just so that we d double look at that insurance item? I already did, and I texted Ben for it too. I, I, I think, I think that's, that's an also an item that has been already presented to the board once, and the board rejected it. That could have been another saving measure that the board didn't act on at the time, but we'll bring it back uh, if, if we have to, to make sure for a vote. And okay, it included so the staff adjustment also at that time. I'm sure what was that? The staff adjustment, some adjustment, adjustment? the staff adjustment plan was also included at that work session. Okay. I'll Just ask on. Ben, he knows. Okay. So the next couple of slides is on just the 2023-24 um, the pay raise recommendation. So what we have is the superintendent administration recommend a one-time 2% stipend from the employee current midpoint to be paid in the last paycheck in October of 2023 or sooner based on state legislative approval. Okay. If an employee retires or leaves the district, the stipend will be prorated. Now moving on to the next slide, what we have is, if the state passes the raise, the approved state funding will replace the district stipend in the appropriate manner required by the state. For example, uh, the stipend will roll into the, salaries in the salary increase if required by the state, right? So it's a difference, right? There's a difference there. Now, we will have a resolution that will be taken uh, for board approval with the stipulations on June 21st, 2023. Okay. We'll make sure that everything's delineated for you all. Are there any questions? Just on the one, the, the one before, the slide before, where it says the 2% stipend from employees current to be paid in October. Mm-hmm. By October. Because we're giving the state legislative to, to meet and make a determination where they're going to provide funding. Because right. the state approves their final budget on October, and so do half the districts. Mm -hmm. No, no. Well, yeah, because yeah. of the August. But uh, mm -hmm. since it's going to be a one-time stipend. Right. So if we go to the next um, page, let me see. In, on that same page, we are moving forward. You don't mean that the state legislature is going to be approving the 2%. You're just saying that they are going to have to approve what then? Correct. So so what we're saying, if, if you go to the next page, it reads, right, so if the state passes a raise, right, the approved state funding will be re replaced, the district stipend, right? So if we get funding from the state, right, then what we'll do is then we'll go ahead and use that funding to cover the, the uh, the stipend and we'll or the raise. More money. Right. So it all depends on the legislative decision that's but that, that we're going to provide either a stipend or a raise. It all depends on the legislative decision that's being going to be. E either made. or we're going to get one. Right. Correct. Okay, good. Correct. Mm -hmm. good. So we're waiting until October to be able to give us some time as well to do what right. we need to do based on, based on the decision that's being made. I was just wondering, because the employees are used to getting one in Christmas, so I'm wondering October, November, December. Or we, we could give an extra down. one. Yeah. So that's why I was wondering, because that's the culture. C and C right. Yes. We, right. We, we have uh, and if right. you give one in money, October, and then you're going to want another one in December. Right. You know, so it just, we just have to be Bring careful with the money. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Any other questions? If there's no other questions, I need a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. I have a motion by Ms. Solis. I need, I need a, se a second. second. A second by Dr. Benavides. Meeting adjourned at 640.